You know what you're listening to? You're listening to the Dean Team bringing the light of Islam right into your hearts. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney. Bismillah walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Dear respected brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all for tuning in to the Dean Team. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah. Today, today we were going to speak about something yani, that's very, very important and very dear and uh, today we're going to speak about salah but there's going to be a little bit of a twist that we're not going to be speaking about salah in itself but rather we're going to be speaking about salah in the masjid salah in the masjid is the essence every single man every single believing man should be praying his five prayers in the masjid this was the sunnah of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam when we look at his seerah when we look at the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the vast majority of his prayers, the vast majority, in fact all of his prayers except when he was traveling or when he was in jihad, the vast majority of his prayers were in the masajid. And you find that there are so many ahadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us so much encouragement, so many virtues that you see through the words of the through the words of the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he wanted his ummah to be praying where in the masajid and one of the most famous ones narrated by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma where he says where he says salatul jama'ati afdalu min salatil fadh bi 27 daraja Abdullah ibn Umar is saying that I heard the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that verily salah in congregation is 27 times more rewarding than salah performed individually. Allahu Akbar, 27 times more it's worth than praying it individually. Jama'ah, again Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he's saying jama'ah He's referring to the masajid. He's referring to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, subhanAllah, when you think about it, 27 times more. You know, sometimes when we come to think about rewards and hasanat, maybe it doesn't sit very well. But if we were to start crunching numbers, you know, once we start talking dollars and figures, then things sort of start to have a bit more meaning. You know, I want you all to imagine that that you're, you know, that you're working for someone or you're employed to a company and they're paying you a thousand dollars a week. And then another company or another employer comes and says, look for the exact same amount of work that you're doing. We're ready and we're prepared to pay you 27,000 a week. 27,000 a week compared to paying, compared to getting paid $1,000 a week. Allahu Akbar, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that when you pray in jama'ah, when you pray in congregation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for the same prayer. He will reward you 27 times more. You know, there's a very beautiful story that follows this. It is said, and I believe, so don't quote me, but I believe it was the Sheikh of Al-Bukhari, the great muhaddith. His Sheikh he prayed all of his prayers in the masjid and he had prayed so many years without ever missing Isha in the masjid. So one time he had a special guest, a guest that had come from a very far place and you know, it's not known exactly what had happened but nevertheless uh, the guest stayed a little bit late and by the time the sheikh was able to reach the masjid he had noticed, he came to the masjid and he noticed that he had noticed that the people had already prayed and they were leaving. So he got so upset and this affected him so much that he decided, he said, he said, he said, by Allah, I'm going to pray my Isha prayer 27 times to make up. He was so upset for missing out on the Jama'ah 
that he prayed his Isha Salah 27 times. You know, this is this is incredible. And you know, when these great scholars, when they're praying the Isha, it's not like you know, it's not like you and I, you know, that quick two, three minute job, you know, Bismillah, Allah Akbar, Subhanallah, this one. No, no, no. It was, you know, uh, uh, you know, it was performed slowly with full concentration, with full devotion, with full contemplating, right? So he prayed it 27 times. And then that night when he went to sleep, he seen a dream. And he said that in his dream, he was on a, he was on a camel or a horse of some sort. And he was running, running after a group of horsemen. And he said, I was running, running, and I was trying so hard to catch up to this group. But no matter how hard I tried, I noticed that the group was drifting further and further away from me. He said, until finally, the last man in the group, the last horseman in the group, he turned to me as I was trying to catch up to them and said to me, you will never, ever, ever catch us. You know, this sheikh, he prayed his Isha 27 times to try to make up for missing one Isha in Jama'ah, right? And in his dream, he was shown that no matter what you do, you will never, ever, ever catch us. So you find here that subhanAllah, it's not just about the reward. There's something special about being in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's something special about performing salah in the masajid. You know, Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates, Man salla, man salla al-ishaa fi jama'atin, faka'annama qama nisfa al-layl, wa man salla subha fi al-jama'a, faka'annama salla al-layla kulla. Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, that the one who performs Isha in congregation, the one who prays his Isha in Jama'ah, and then he follows up Isha with Fajr in Jama'ah, whoever does this, right, whoever performs his Isha in Jama'ah, he will receive the reward of half the night in prayer. So you just praying your Isha in Jama'ah, you will receive half the night in prayer. And then he says, whoever follows that up with Fajr, so you pray your Fajr and your Isha in Jama'ah. He says he will receive the reward as if he prayed the whole night. As if he prayed the whole night, this is the reward that he gets. So Allahu Akbar, yani just by you praying your Fajr and your Isha. So imagine you go to the masjid, you pray your Isha, and then you go home. You have some dinner, you hang out with your family, you go for a drive. Or even if you decide to go to sleep, while you're doing all of these actions, you will be receiving the reward as if you're in salah. Allahu Akbar. How much reward? How much ajr? And imagine you died during the night. So imagine you've prayed your isha, you go to sleep and you die. You died in a state of receiving reward of salah. What an honor. What an honor, my dear respected brothers and sisters. You know, our hearts need to be attached to the masajid. Wallahi, there is something so special about the five prayers when they're performed in the masjid. We should be like fish out of water when we're not in the masajid. We should be like, we should be like fish who have been pulled out of the water when we're far away from the salah being performed in the masjid. And the rewards are يعني, endless, endless. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates, لَوْ يَعْلَمُ النَّاسُ مَا فِي النِّدَاءِ وَالصَّفِّ الْأَوَّلِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَجِدُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ لَسْتَهِمُوا عَلَيْهِ وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي الْأَ... وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي التَّهْجِيرِ لَسْتَبَكُوا إِلَيْهِ وَلَوْ يَعْلَمُونَ مَا فِي الْعَتْمَةِ وَالصُّبْحِ لَأَتَوْهُمَا وَلَوْ حَبْوَا What an amazing, amazing hadith. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu he narrates that if the people knew the reward of making adhan and standing in the front row, in the first row, they would draw lots. They would draw lots to secure these privileges. You know, my brothers and sisters, wallahi, the biggest issue is, is that we don't know these rewards. We don't know what is laying there. You know, I've lost count how many times I've walked into a masjid 
and it's time for Adan and the brothers start looking at each other as in who here is brave enough to get up and make the Adan. You know, every one of us, when it comes to these Ibadat, everyone becomes shy and uh, nobody wants to make the first move. But here the Prophet of Allah is saying, لو يعلم الناس That only if the people knew the reward, the reward of making Adan and standing in the front row, in the first row of Salah, they would cast lots. Yani they would gamble for it. They would gamble for it. Why? Because the rewards are so high. And then he continues on to say, right? And were they to realize the reward of coming early to the prayer, they would race for it. The Prophet of Allah is saying that if the people knew the rewards of coming early to Salah, they would rush and they would race to be there early. Allahu Akbar. When you think about this today, it's the exact opposite. Today we rock up to the prayer, uh, halfway, th halfway through the first rak'ah, we've double parked outside, we're rushing, we're running red lights to make the prayer. This sunnah, yeah, this sunnah, we are so far from it, coming early, parking your car, coming down, sitting, waiting for the salah, being there early, right? And then subhanAllah, he continues on to say, and if the people were to know the reward of Isha and Fajr in the masjid, they would come even if they had to crawl. Yani if we knew the reward of Fajr and Isha in the masjid, we would come to the masjid even if we had to crawl. What an amazing statement. Why would the Prophet of Allah feel that it's necessary to let us know that had we known the reward, we would come to the masjid even if we had to crawl? Why? Because the rewards, the rewards, my brothers and sisters, of praying these prayers in the masjid are so huge. They are so huge. You know, again, going back, we don't really know the value we really don't know the value of the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we know the value of money. You know, I'll give you an example. Whenever whenever the topic of salah in the masjid is brought up, you know, we always get the normal, yeah, but brother, I'm working and, you know, it's a bit hard. And, you know, look, I live a little bit far from the masjid. Whatever the case is and whatever your reasons are, everybody knows himself. But here the Prophet of Allah is saying, that if the people knew, they would come crawling. You know, I really like this example because it really makes the mind think, you know. I want you to imagine that your local masjid made an announcement that for every salah you make in the masjid, there's a hundred dollars waiting for you on the door. Honestly, what would happen in that masjid? Le wallahi, even the Jews and the Christians, they would come and they would start praying in that masjid. $100 a prayer, that's 500 bucks a day. You would never work again in your life. Why? Because we know the value of $500. And you know what? Let's go a little bit further. I want you to imagine that the same masjid made an announcement that, look, if you're keen enough to come in crawling on your hands and knees, we'll give you $1,000 a prayer. My brothers, what do you think would happen to your local area? Now, Wallahi, you're returning to a zoo. You see everyone's rushing to the masjid on their hands and knees. Why? It's a thousand dollars. That's five prayers a day. That's five thousand dollars a day. Uh, see, we know the value of money. But here the Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying that you know, low low Yaalamu Nasu Mafil Atmati was subhi la low la atohuma wala habwa. That if the people knew the reward of Fajr and Isha they would come even if they had to crawl. My brothers and sisters, how many Fajrs and Ishats have passed us by? Yeah? And we've prayed them at home, or we've prayed them in the shopping centers, or we've prayed them at, you know, at the restaurants. While, while our Prophet is telling us that had the people known, had the people known they would come even if they had to crawl. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates, that man tatahara fi baytihi thumma mada ila baytin min buyuti Allah liyaqdiya faridatin min faraid Allah 
كانت خطواته إحداها تحط الخطيئة والأخرى ترفع درجة هي أبو هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه is saying I heard the prophet of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم say and what a beautiful hadith you know again you know let's 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 sort of try to live the hadith he says whoever purifies himself meaning whoever makes wudu in his house then walks to one of the houses of Allah Azza wa Jal to perform one of the obligatory salat one of the obligatory prayers then for every step he takes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wipes a sin away and he elevates his rank in paradise so for every single step you make my brother and sister heading towards the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of performing a salah then every step Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he wipes away a sin and every single step Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gives you a hasana and every single step Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he elevates your ranks he elevates your ranks yani what an honor don't think that you know walking to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is an easy thing you know just like just like with us in this dunya you know every one of us he has a house and every one of us he loves his house one way or another you love it and you do your best to protect it and some of us are prepared to fight and some of us are even prepared to die to protect our homes and to protect our families right and just like how with our homes not just anyone can enter your house you know <laughs> not just any wacko can come and knock on the door and walk in and you know run a muck and do whatever he wants no for me to enter your house number one you need to give me permission you need to be content you need to feel you know happy or safe or whatever the case is but i cannot enter your house without your permission my brothers and sisters don't think that anyone can just walk into the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you're walking into the greatest place on the earth the prophet of allah he says verily the verily the greatest places the best places on the face of the planet are the houses of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the best places to be and you're walking into the house of the king so don't think that you know well look just anyone can rock up off the street and walk into the house of the king right and do whatever he pleases no every single time we're there every single time we're there you're there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has invited you you're there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it possible you're there because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to be in his house what an honor what an honor you know every single step you take towards the masjid again we go back to our you know <laughs> we we go back to our parking problems right we're double parking and blocking off driveways and parking in other people's driveways but here if we knew the rewards of parking you would park you know a block away two blocks away and know that for every single step i'm taking towards the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating my rank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me hasanat allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know he's wiping away my bad deeds you know the prophet of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says bashiru al mashaina fi al dhulam ila al masajid bi nur tam yawm al qiyamah the prophet of allah is saying that give good news give glad tidings to those who walk again to those who walk you know some of us are thinking yeah but what about driving you will also get the reward but here the prophet of allah he could have said you know whoever goes there on his camel or whoever goes there you know which was which was equivalent to our driving now but here sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying there's something special in walking my brothers there is something special about walking to the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you know so you know if you drive because the masjid is 10 15 minutes away from your house right then drive but try to park a block away try to park two blocks away try to be there early he says bashir al mashaina fi dhulam ila al masajid bi nur tam yawm al qiyamah give good news and glad tidings to those who walk to the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in darkness with what what's the good news that the prophet of allah wants us to hear what's the glad tidings he says bi nur tam yawm al qiyamah bi nur tam yawm al qiyamah you know the good news is that on the day of judgment 
on the day of judgment you will have full light full light why because you used to walk to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya my brothers what an honor what an honor on a day that is 50,000 years long a day where there's going to be confusion and people going all over the place no one knows what direction where to go a place of darkness you will have full light on that day you will have full light and here when they say darkness you know to those who walk to the houses of Allah in darkness meaning what meaning the fajr salah the maghrib salah the isha prayer again subhanallah stressing again you know stressing that what that these prayers you know that these night prayers are very special and subhanallah another way to look at this word darkness is in times of darkness and my brothers and sisters there is no doubt whatsoever that today we are definitely living in times of darkness you know and in these times of darkness when you walk to the masjid or when you drive or when you go to the masjid whether it's a duhr prayer or an asr prayer then you too bi idnillah ta'ala by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be of those people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them full light full light on the day of judgment you know Abu Huraira again again this great man Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu he says you know he says he says that I heard the prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say ألا أدلكم على ما يمحو الله به الخطايا ويرفع به الدرجات The Prophet of Allah is asking his companions, you know, shall I not tell you, shall I not inform you of something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wipes away your sins and he elevates your ranks? So the companions were like, of course, of course, O Prophet of Allah, tell us what deed, tell us what deed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe away our sins and elevate our ranks. So what does he say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Isbaghu al-wudu'i ala al-makari wa kathratu al-khuta ila al-masajid wa antidharu al-salati ba'da al-salat fathalikum al-ribat fathalikum al-ribat Allahu Akbar, what a beautiful, beautiful hadith. The Prophet of Allah is saying that I'm going to tell you things Things that you can do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will wipe away your sins and elevate your rank. And what are they? He says, Isbaghul wudu'i ala al makari. Making wudu in harsh conditions or in ugly conditions or in hard places. You know, how many times, maybe this isn't so relevant to us living in the West, but there are times, you know, you wake up for Fajr, you know, 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, and you're probably a little bit cold. You come to make wudu. You know, the wudu is cold. It takes you a while to get the water temperature right. Sometimes the very thought of having to make wudu turns us off actually making the whole prayer altogether. <laughs> right? But here the Prophet of Allah is saying, Isbaghul wudu'i ala al makari. That making wudu in times of, you know, you know, uh, Yani, you're making wudu in spite of the difficult difficult circumstances and then he says المساجد, again we go back to walking he says what and walking with more paces with more steps to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again you know that walking and taking you know shorter steps why so that you can do more steps and then he says and waiting for the next salah Imagine, heck, you prayed your dhuhr and you sit in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're waiting for the next prayer. You know, so long as you're sitting there, you will get the rewards as if you're in the prayer. Anyone who sits waiting for salah, his reward as if he's already in the prayer. So he says, you know, so he says, making wudu in difficulties, walking to the masjid with more steps and, you know, and he says, waiting for the next prayer. And he says, what? فَذَلِكُمُ الْرِبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الْرِبَاطِ He says, this is ribat, this is ribat. Ribat is those who when the army is going out in jihad, right? While the army is asleep, they watch. They keep an eye out. 
So it's almost like they do the border security. And this was a big honor. This was a big, big honor and a big status and a big rank for someone to have the privilege of looking out for the army while they rested, while they camped, you know. And, and, and so, so, so here he's saying that, you know, doing all of these deeds, فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ فَذَلِكُمُ الرِّبَاطِ Allahu Akbar, the Prophet of Allah, he says, he says, إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الرَّجُلَ يَعْتَادُ إِلَى الْمَسَاجِدِ فَاشْهَدُ لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ Allahu Akbar, you know, going to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not just about rewards, it's not just about rewards, but the Prophet of Allah is saying that if you see a man frequent the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's frequent there, he's there for most of the prayers on a regular basis, what does he say? He says, فَشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ Then bear witness and testify that this man, he has faith, he has iman. Why? Because there's proof. He's regular in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَشْهَدُوا لَهُ بِالْإِيمَانِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, what an amazing verse in Surah At-Tawbah. He says, إِنَّمَا يَعْمَرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Verily, those who establish the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it could also be translated to mean those who keep the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala full and busy, أَهُوْ أَهُوْ إِنَّمَا يَعْمَرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Are those people who believe in Allah and they believe in the last day. And they believe in the last day. You know, you know, these this this is the quality of those people. They love the masajid. They love to be there. You know? Wallahi, wallahi, my brothers and sisters, there are no excuses. There are no excuses for us to not be regular in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No excuses whatsoever. And the rewards are endless. Endless. You know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Rijalun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, again, speaking about those who are, you know, Rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah. You know, that men are those who no business, no trade takes them away from what? From the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, again, it's a sign of belief. It's a sign of iman <clears throat> to be regular in the masjid, to be regular in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the prayers, to be receiving, you know, this 27 times the reward. You know, sometimes, you know, sometimes my brothers and sisters, when you look at, you know, our companions and you see how these men lived, you know, you find it amazing. You know, I would like to share this one, this one story. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he reported that a blind man came to the Prophet of Allah. أَتَى نَبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ رَجُلٌ أَعْمَى فَقَالَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ لَيْسَ لِي قَائِدٌ يَقُودُنِي إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ فَسَأَلْ Right? So here he's saying that a blind man came to the Prophet of Allah. And he asked the Prophet of Allah and he said to him, A Prophet of Allah, I am blind. And he was an old man. And he's blind. And he said to him that there's no one to take me to the masjid. There's no one to take me. لَيْسَ لِي قَائِدٌ يَقُودُنِي إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ That there's no one to help me or to take me or to guide me to the, you know, to the masjid. So he asked the Prophet of Allah that our Prophet of Allah, can I have a concession and pray at home? فَسَأَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ يَرَخِصَ لَهُ فَيُصَلِّ فِي بَيْتِي فَرَخَصَ لَهُ so the Prophet of Allah, he gave him the concession. He says to him, fine, pray at home. فَلَمَّا وَلَّ دَعَاهُ So when the man turned away and walked off, the Prophet of Allah called him back. Imagine a blind man who's old, who doesn't have anyone to take him to the masjid. He's asking for a concession. Can I pray at home? Look at the conditions. So the Prophet of Allah, he says to him, pray. But as the man walked off, he called him back and asked him, هَلْ تَسْمَعُ النِّدَاءِ بِالصَّلَةِ قَالَ نَعْمْ قَالَ فَأَجِبْ 
The Prophet of Allah asked him, Do you hear the Adan? Do you hear the man when he calls and says, Hayya ala salati, hayya ala al-falah? The old man, the blind man says to him, Yes. He says to him, Well, then come to the masjid and answer the call for prayer. Allahu Akbar. The Prophet of Allah who had mercy, who had love, who had rahmah, he's insisting and he made this old man who's blind, who doesn't have anyone to help him. And in another narration of the same hadith, right, he says, Ya Rasulullah, Inna al Madinata kathira al Hawami wa Sibah. A Prophet of Allah in Medina, there's a lot of dangerous insects, poisonous, you know, insects, and there's a lot of wild beasts, and I'm blind, and I have no one to bring me to the masjid, you know. Can I pray at home? He says to him, so long as you hear Hayya ala salati, Hayya ala al falah, fahayya ala. If you hear the call, then answer the call. You know, my brothers and sisters, going back once more, just to remind us, you know, that the 27 times the reward, praying your Fajr and Isha in the Masjid, how much Ajr, how much reward is sitting for us there. And my brothers and sisters, you know, when you, when you become regular in the Masjid, you feel an attachment, you feel close. You know, I want you to imagine that someone claims to you, someone says to you, I love you. And he says, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. But a whole year passes, or a whole week passes, or a whole month passes, and not once does he come to visit you. How much longer would you continue to believe he, you know, his or her claim of, I love you? How can we claim that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't regulate his house? How can we claim you know, utmost love and devotion and ibadah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but our hearts are not attached to the masjid. So my brothers and sisters, we need to bring this quality into our life. We need to make ourselves from the people. We need to make ourselves from the people who like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا يَعْمَرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ we want to become of those people who believe in Allah and who believe in the last day. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those people who pray their five prayers insha'Allah ta'ala, who pray their five prayers in the masjid. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those people who call others to also establish this beautiful sunnah and to fill up our masajids one more and to make them shine the way they used to in the days of Muhammad and in the great men that came after him. Jazakallahu khayran for tuning in. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you all. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all jannah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Follow us on Facebook at the Dean Team Sydney radio program and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dean Team Sydney.